if you are as old as I am or older, you might remember an entire mercantile division that has all been lost to the dustbin of history, the electronics store. We had clock radios and pocket calculators and spell checkers and this sort of thing. The smartphone destroyed all of that. But what was cool about these stores was that you could go in and get a piece of wire, a circuit, a specialized battery, a capacitor, and build your own stuff. You could, you know, modify an RC car that you bought one aisle over at the same electronics store. If the smartphone had not destroyed these stores, today what we might find next to those RC cars on a shelf is Beyond Humanity Colonies. Now you might be saying, Pete, why would we be having a board game on an electronic store shelf in 2022 if that were still a thing? Stick with me, because I'm going to show you. All right, here is Beyond Humanity Colonies. Just flip this around, show the back of the box here. Now this copy of the game does not have any shrink on it because um, we acquired this very slightly used, so it is new to us, um, but no shrink. I guess somebody's been poking around this box before us, but that's okay. Um, because my understanding is that they poked around in the box, but have not actually played it, unwrapped everything. So this will be essentially new. Um, and right away we are hit with uh, the Beyond Humanity Colonies Corporate Manager's Guide, which I assume is a rule book. We have another book here, um, which is an annex. Yeah, so right away we're hit with a table of contents and a illustrated itemized components list. Gameplay general description, um, red string cards and token with the arc module. Um, so this is an app um, assisted game and uh, some of the components here um, are electronic and Bluetooth enabled um, and have LEDs and we'll get to that later and um, I'll show you how that all hooks up later uh, with some B-roll at the end of the video. Instructions, decrees, modules, artifacts, resources, economy, and then thank you for believing in us. Oh, that's quite nice. And then we have some QR codes for Discord um, and some other things. Um, and that takes us to, how many pages is this manual? They're not individually numbered, but it's, I'm going to guess, 24, 28 pages of manual. So um, definitely more than one trip to the restroom to get through that, but that's fine. Um, and then we have the annex here. So um, some scenarios, not sure exactly what everything is different around here, but we have a lot of quick reference guides for some iconography, lots of iconography referencing right here. Lots more um, iconography in the modules list um, on the back of this annex. So, next we are hit with, um, oh, thank you for your support from Three-Headed Monster. Just some feel-good thank you material. Um, here is how to change the batteries in the ARC module, how to register the NFC card in the ARC module. Little tech guide that I just flung off the table by accident. Um, and we have some stickers, which do something, and a whole bunch of stickers. So it looks like we have, yeah, stickers here. We're gonna have a little bit of a assembly before we play. Um, and it looks like we have even more stickers here. That's what these look like. Decals or stickers or something like that. Um, now, yeah, so the, the previous owner didn't punch these out, so they clearly have not uh, actually played the game or this, cop this copy of the game. Um, so we have some cardboard punch-outs here. Um, and 
So on the back, we have some characters with some narrative text, um, some flavor text here. And so we have Athena Gore, who is a major, and we have Vlad Pokorny, who is a uh, visionary. Um, and yeah, we can definitely see that. I'm trying to determine um, supporting group. Yeah, okay. So it looks like this part of the card, the, these player boards here, or character boards, are essentially the same, but it looks like we have some variable player powers here. Um, and then we have, I'm gonna put these to the side real quick. And we have some other characters. And these punch out really nice. These are solid character boards. I'm not gonna punch out everything right now, but. Um, it's coming out, oh, uh, tore it a little bit, um, but just to clean this up with a knife, didn't actually tear the board. Um, we have some other characters here. We have Art Chen, who's a preacher. And we have Ava Hu, or Zhu, who's a racketeer. And on the back, we have um, their flavor text and some basic demographic information. And then we have, um, put this aside. Uh, Paul Bloch, or Bloch, who's an engineer, and we have narrative text about Paul as well. Um, we have a couple other characters here. We have Giselle Carter and Mac McCain, the broker. Uh, Giselle's the uh, explorer. I'll just show you their uh, flavor text. Um, and then we have these uh, cardboard pieces right here, which as you already saw, say ability on the back. Um, and so we have some interesting iconography. Voice of the people, draw plus one decree when drawing any decrees. Uh, multitasking manager, plus two VP per each completed goal. Legendary pathfinder, plus two VP for each completed artifact. Uh, natural born leader, five victory points. Uh, subroutine controller, when doing a research action, earn one XP. Um, and patented methodology when doing a research action, pay one less resource. Um, and so we have some more abilities here. Um, wealthy manager, gain plus one VP, uh, each CR or TG in your repositories. Uh, lifelong Ventura contract, discard one of your goals. Okay, um, and we have uh, a few more characters right here as well. I won't punch all of these out, but we have Boris Aryomov, who's an inventor, and Lucas uh, Johannes, who is a warden. And there is their flavor text and demographics as well. I have more ability uh, sticks, essentially, right here. Um, and here, if I can punch these out. Lots of heavy cardboard stuff to punch out, which is interesting. Um, it looks like some kind of player board or ancillary board. Okay, some colonies board right here. Um, lots of iconography and places to put cards. Uh, one more ability here, which I'll actually read. Offshore account, additional CR repository. Um, and then we have a, no idea what these do. So it looks like player count cards of some type. Player count boards. Um, we have another game board with lots of iconography on it. All right. And then what I just cast aside, there are more punch boards of, which are falling out all over the place, but um, it looks like these um, are all unique little kind of development sticks that correspond to other components in the game. I only know that because I've looked online a little bit about this game. Um, and we'll get to what these symbols mean 
these wire, a little bit more than wireframes in a minute, but I think these are used to kind of develop other aspects of the game, other colony modules and things like that. Um, you know, they're kind of indecipherable um, with all this iconography, but you can see it says temporary residential, Cubes Academy, Health and Support Center, Hangar, Test Chamber, Spaceport, Laboratory, Bunker, um, Prison Dome, and then a whole bunch more fell out. Um, and then we have another punch board of more of the same type of thing. And on the back, and just they're just falling out, which is fine. They'll come out quite nicely. Um, you have the other side. So maybe it proposed or developed or something. There are a lot of this sort of game coming out right now. Not necessarily with all of these uh, Bluetooth enabled LED components, but many games about pushing further and further and farther and farther, depending on your perspective, into the unknown of space. We haven't been to the moon since 1972. And now with the Artemis project, we're going back. Maybe. Maybe we're even going to Mars. Uh, I don't think we're going to see it in our lifetimes because it's really, really hard and expensive. And the reality is that unless humanity either perceives some sort of existential crisis to their own security or they find some economic opportunity that they can leverage, we're quite lazy as a species. So now what we have are some decks of cards. And again, you know, the guy I got this from um, clearly just kind of poked through the box because these are all unopened. Come back to those momentarily. Um, where do I want to start? More cards here. So in this bag, we have lots of plastic bits, um, plastic resource cubes. Um, yeah, just. And you can see here where they were assembled. There are some, some uh, kind of mold points there. Um, and these, these plastic components are fine. They're, uh, it's really nice. They're plastic and not cardboard. They seem kind of cloudy, um, cloudy or dirty. And it's, it's not that they're used, right? Um, Cause it's essentially a new copy of the game. Um, I just, I don't like the plastic material that these are made out of. It seems a little, they just, they look a little bit, you get tons of them. They just, they look a little bit cheap. They feel a little bit cheap. Um, but I would much rather have these than cardboard components, I think. So I'm not really sure what else to say about that. Um, again, you get tons and tons of them. I'm not really, I get, maybe I am complaining. Um, very, very minor complaint. Um, and then you have some of these here. See on this one, you just see a little bit of, it's like this plastic kind of is susceptible to scraping against itself maybe. Um, again, it's really fine. Um, but I'm not going to say anything anymore about that, to be honest with you. Um, it does come with uh, four uh, ever active uh, AA batteries um, because, well, we lose electricity in this game. Um, we have some more of those development sticks that fell out of the punch board here. Um, we've already seen a whole bunch of these, so there are more there. Um, here we have. It looks like, what do we got here? Like little cardboard, cardboard punches of, of uh, the different characters that you can be. And it looks like they're in little coin cases. Um, I mean, that's very clearly what they are, little coin collector plastic cases. And I can only assume that uh, the previous owner of the game put these in these cases for some reason, which is bizarre to me, given that they clearly didn't play the game, um, but maybe they had fun doing this. I assume the base game does not come like this. I could be wrong. I, I have no way of knowing. Um, but so 
just be aware of that. And then we have this kind of strange token, which is maybe a first player token or something. Here we have a pin. Let's see, let's see. First to leave the earth, first among the stars, beyond humanity, colonies first, backers. Um, okay, so this is a, a Kickstarter backer pin. Fun, so just a fun little thank you component um, that the developers and publishers put in the box, so fun. Um, here, actually I'm gonna come back to these in a second. So what we have here are, these are um, plastic modules that used to play the game. These are colony modules that you set up on the board as you're building your colony. That's kind of the point of the game is to build and manage this colony. And you can see here that there are these little nodes that are three pin uh, connector nodes. Um, and this is kind of a hub that has six and this module only has one. And what you have in this bag here is a whole bunch of connectors, which are essentially wires. Um, and the way this works is you here, snap this onto here and you snap this onto, oops. looks like these pins can bend. So you need to be careful about that. Um, you can, so if you can, I don't know if you can see that the pins are a little bit bent. There you can see it. So um, just be careful. I'm gonna bend that back with a knife later. Um, this one looks fine. So you put that on there and you put that on there. There we go. And again, you just, you, just, you know, these are delicate. Um, I mean, not super delicate, but again, if I bend that other pin back with a knife, it should be fine. And um, there are, Obviously you can't see them right now, but these are loaded up with LEDs and if you put these down on the table and Connect them up with the other components, then you'll have a colony which is um, Powered with batteries and Bluetooth enabled and connected to the app and they interact in cool ways So those are those units. I'm gonna come back to these cards in a minute if We lift this up and we lift up these pieces here, then we have a whole bunch more uh, units. So I believe this unit is the central hub and you can see four connection points for colonies. Um, based on what we saw, um, this opens up and you put the AA batteries in here and this is the piece that's Bluetooth can enables that spreads out to everything else via those wire connections. Um, and then we have a couple units like this that have three hubs there, kind of tri-symmetry there. And we get a couple of these, which have six connecting points. And let's see, there's some double up here. So these are a little bit different. And these are a little bit different, all sorts of ways to connect. You can see all these three pin connection points, hopefully. I'm trying to keep track of, this one only has one, which is interesting, it's kind of a terminus. These are like endpoints they can't, you know, some of these you can build, have multiple points to build off of. These only have one. And this one has two, kind of looks like a power plant. And you saw all those stickers earlier. I assume those stickers are designed to go on these um, units, on these on these um, colony units. These two are the same. Oh no, I'm not, I'm sorry, they're not. They're slightly different. Um, you can see the tops there are different. And, oh, I'm just flinging stuff around, gotta be careful. Um, this one is slightly different as well. If you thought we were done, we're not. Because, what? We have a third layer. Um, and we have 
tons of different color units here. These are slightly different, right? Looks like we have, I'm just gonna pull this whole thing up. That is the bottom of the box. Um, these storage trays are very, um, Durable, by the way. These are, this is this is not flimsy plastic at all. Um, this one looks like a flying saucer. Even though it's a common thing. Um, so you get the idea. These are all a little bit different. Um, looks like these are the same. Um, okay, so the components in this game are absolutely incredible. But I do have to say that if this game had a tertiary title, right? It's got colonies and then the subtitles beyond humanity and the tertiary title should be because screwing up one planet just isn't enough. But we're still not done going through the components because we still have these three decks four decks of cards. So I'm actually going to put this to the side and if I can find, well, I'm just making a mess. This is just everywhere. Um, we open this up and you can actually see in this deck of cards that you've got some, um, yeah, this is, look, look at this. These, you get some weird, kind of moisture damage here or spreading in the cards. Um, and they are, they are kind of banged up a little bit. So it's actually possible that the person who sold this to me re uh, shrink these cards, which is like totally fine, no complaints there. Um, so maybe they, they, they opened up the packs of cards and I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. It's, it's kind of difficult um, to know for sure. But uh, we have some fleet cards and decree cards. So, so I didn't really complete my thought there. It's hard to know for sure if these cards are in not the best shape because of, of a production issue or because if this game is second hand to me. Um, and hopefully it's the second hand issue, obviously, if you're buying this new. Um, and if it is a production issue, maybe it's not all copies. Um, I, I wish I could inform you better on that so you could make an informed decision. Unfortunately, this is the information I have. Um, but even if it were a production issue, this would not deter me from getting this game. I will say that. So do with that information what you will. And actually, I'm looking at this more and more, and I do think so, just based on the difference in shrink here, I do think that these cards were re-shrunk, repackaged, um, and that previous owner didn't go through these, because these, I said, different shrink, better shrink, and they're not having that same production issue. So that's kind of been a back and forth narrative of discovery, but ultimately good news for those who would consider buying this game new. Um, okay, so I'm still sorting out these cards. I apologize, this is taking so long. Uh, goals. One more to go through here. Goals, 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 goals. Advisor. Artifacts. Okay. So, um, it looks like we have some assistant cards that do something. Iconography. Um, and then we have some advisor cards. I will need to go through and make sure I have all of the components. And some action sockets. Okay, so yeah, these are uh, 
player aid cards that are double sided and there are both sides of them right there. Very nice. Um, and then on the back of these cards, we have three headed monster. So these are, yeah, these are just, um, you know, plan your expansion through space, join now. Problems, questions, get fast support here. Halt, download the game app now. Um, and it looks like just this is a promo card for another game. So, and they do all have QR codes on them. It's quite nice. So you can just, if you're having a problem, scan during the game with your mobile device. Hopefully um, it's user friendly in that way. So we have some goal cards here. And I'm just gonna go through these pretty quickly. You can obviously pause the video. Um, goals for points. If you're interested. And then we have some yellow gold cards. And then we have a whole bunch of artifact cards. Old satellite. Just to give you a taste of this, I want there to be something for you to discover on your own. Realistically, highest peak, lost container, and I'm kind of shuffling through these three or four at a time, so they're definitely way more than it may seem. Let's see how many of these uh, artifact cards you get. And then we have some directive cards here. And these cards are thicker than the other cards for some reason. So it's it's a really nice production, but it's not a uniform production, um, which means it's it's um, I don't want to say amateurish, but that's the word I just came out of my mouth. Um, uh, it's clearly like this overproduced game and just wonderful, wonderful components in many ways. Just the cards are, I don't know. Not a great, not a great feel to them. They're just, you know, not the best cardstock. Um, thick cardstock, not, like I said, not uniform. I've got a lot of red and green here. That's interesting. Um, so I'm not, I'm going to go through some of these directive cards, but just so you know, this is how many you get from the directive cards. And again, we're having a little bit of a an issue here. I need to get off of that. Um, it looks like we have blue ones and red ones and green ones, which clearly means something different. Um, the interesting thing about the artwork throughout this game is that it's it seems to be, you know, it's not super aesthetically pleasing, but I think it's designed to be kind of gritty and realistic to kind of uh, immerse people in the harshness, the reality of trying to establish a colony on somewhere, a planet other than Earth. Um, so to me, it's like, like I said, not pretty artwork, but it might be immersive for the right uh, feel and tone of this game. Um, and so you have a whole nother stack, stack here of the uh, decree cards, and that is everything that comes in Beyond Humanity colonies. So there it is. Uh, there is Colonies Beyond Humanity in a nutshell. Uh, it is uh, app enabled, um, app assisted, to, but it's the app is really just to keep track of your points and give you uh, reports back on the state of the game. If this game isn't for you, it is still cool to check out. Maybe you can check it out at a board game cafe or at a friend's house or at a convention. And if nothing else, grab some Sipping Hooch and check out the cool LED lights. Uh, Sipping Hooch, why? Because that's all that's going to be available to drink on uh, colonies in the uh, spirited department for a long, long time because growing grains and bringing all that equipment to make quality alcohol will be expensive. I don't know. I don't know. I just went with it. Um, please do like and subscribe. Check out our other Corex and Coffee unboxing videos and the other content on our website. Leave a comment, a question, a concern. Uh, share these videos with your friends. 
and we hope to see you at the board gaming table soon uh, on this planet. Yeah? This planet. Okay. All right.